Hello, my love. I am. Oh my gosh. How do I even begin how I feel about recording this podcast episode for you? I was going to say excited, but that's not, well, it is excited, but it's a higher level of excitement that I can use in words because of the transformation that's happened in my life pretty rapidly over the past six weeks and what I'm going to share with you today and how I hope you'll apply it to your life to overcome fear of what's holding you back and make a bold move on something that is calling to you and inspiring you. So uh, this is a solo episode and I'm going to share with you a little personal story and a lot of lessons I've learned in a short amount of time. So you, um, you may have seen on Instagram, um, on December 26th of 2020, I did a video and I, and it's called, uh, just did something that terrifies me because I did, I had just done something that terrified me and I'm going to give you a little bit of context and then I'm going to tell you what it was. And then I'm going to tell you what has happened since then. So in November of 2020, I was doing an exercise with my coach at the time that really kind of smacked me upside the face in a good way. And this exercise uh, was called the five dream lives, which I think was actually inspired by Kathy Heller. So shout out to Kathy. If, uh, if this is, if it came from you originally, um, but the exercise is your five dream lives and it's exactly what it sounds like. So she had me just kind of anchor in and remove any sort of judgment or, um, or, you know, disbelief about what was possible for me and say, look, if you could live out five dream lives right now, what would they be? And I, and I journaled about them for about five minutes and stuff showed up that was either related to a childhood dream that I had shelved and said, oh, that's not for you. That's just not going to happen in this lifetime or things that had felt really big. And it was kind of like they were maybe teetering in the back of my subconscious, um, but I'd never allowed them to really come forth because I just felt like they were so much bigger than I would even know how to create. And so some of the things that showed up were uh, like be a feminine media mogul, a, um, a philanthropist in a really big way. One of my dreams and visions for a while, and this came up during the exercise, has been to create a sanctuary, an animal sanctuary. I'm a huge animal lover. So a sanctuary for animals who have been abused, um, but also to include the place where people can come and heal there, specifically people who are overcoming addictions. I've got a fair number of addiction, just um, people have struggled with addiction in my family, including myself with food addiction for years. And I really have a place in my heart for people who are going through that. Um, I also, what showed up and I, and I know this for a while, but it showed back up was paying for my husband, Jason's medical school. He's going to go to DO school next year. And I, my commitment is to pay for that in full myself. And so, you know, these dreams were showing up and they all felt so right. And they also mostly all cost a lot of money. <laughs> And I remember looking at them and when we first did it, you know, I put them on my vision board. I got pictures that looked like, looked like them. And I put them on my vision board. And then I, you know, I actually remember what it was that kind of shifted my mindset. One of the things I, that was a part of a dream life was to be more involved politically and be more active politically, specifically campaigning for animals and children's rights. And I just started looking up these women who are really involved in that now. And they were like me. Like they were my age or younger. Um, they, a lot of them looked like me. There was nothing really that different. And it was kind of this moment of, oh my God, what have I been waiting for? Like, what am I waiting for? Am I, is someone going to come and give me permission to do this stuff? Like, who's going to come tell me that it's time? Why have I been giving my power away and believing that some way, somehow, someday, someone would come, like it would be the right time for this or someone would come and then I would be free to do it or I'd get in the right life stage. And it was just, it was like, that's not how it works. The way it actually works is you make a decision and you just do it. That's it. And I remember at that moment, it was like, oh, wow. I have to just claim this for myself now because I think especially if 2020 taught us nothing. It's that we don't really know what's going to happen in life or how long any of us has here. And one of the things I've been committed to for a long time in my life is feeling like I played full out and feeling like I really went for it. And that's actually how I evaluate a lot of decisions that feel uncomfortable or scary is like, if I was on my deathbed, 
um, what would I wish I had done? What would I wish I had done? You can also think about it, uh, you know, if you flipped a coin and one, you knew one decision was heads and one was tails and it landed, and it landed on one side, which side would you wish it had landed on? And that'll usually tell you what you should do. But so oh, I just went on a tangent. Overcoming fear, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I just decided, I was like, it's time. And, and so there's something magical that happens when we make a decision about something and we decide to get out of the in-between land. And gosh, I have vacillated in in-between land with a lot of stuff and it's not fun, right? You've kind of got this one side of you and it's like your intuition, your knowing, your higher calling that's calling you to take action on something. And it's usually a quiet voice. Your intuition isn't usually like a loud screaming voice unless you're being chased by a, you know, a gunman or something. Um, it's usually quiet, which makes it somewhat easy to ignore and repress, except it starts to show up in your body if you do that. And that shows up as anxiety, panic attacks, fear, stomach issues, skin issues, all this stuff. Um, so you're kind of pulled between right this intuition of it's time to step up to this greater thing but then you also have these like limiting beliefs that are kind of holding you back and that's just old neurological programming that's telling you you can't do this or you're not worth it and that was usually just told to you by someone when you were growing up who really was doubting and questioning themselves and you you either saw that in them or you heard that from them and you internalized that as being true for you when it really wasn't so I think that's really a big part of growth in, in life is learning to think for yourself, learning to think for yourself. And so I started, you know, I made the decision that I was going to just be available for whatever needed to happen for me to start showing up and playing in a much bigger way in living out these dream lives. And I got the, I got the nudge, I got the inkling, I got the feeling that I should hire a particular woman as a coach. Now, this particular woman, I've not been like a, a super fan for years, you know, like I'll occasionally listen to her podcast. I've, I like her stuff. Like her brand is really great. Um, but I'm not like, I haven't been like diehard fangirl over her stuff, but it was like this very clear, calm, you need to hire her and not, you need to hire her for group coaching. You need to hire her for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Like, okay, that's interesting. And I'd actually thought I was going to get out of hiring a high-end coach this year. I've done that for the past few years and I've invested, you know, tens of thousands of dollars every year in it. And, um, this year, you know, I just had Jack when this was all happening, Jack was four months old. And I was like, I'm, I'm working part-time now. I'm enjoying relaxing a little bit. I'm enjoying mom life. And I think I'm just going to coast and take it easy for a while. Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> That did not last long and that's okay, right? Because I wouldn't have actually been happy if I did that. It's like, we each have to follow our own path. For me, that would not have made me happy. Um, so I got this inkling that I needed to hire this woman. And then it was something like a couple days later on her podcast, she just, she kind of on an offhand remark said, oh, I have room for two more one-on-one -on -one coaching clients right now. And I was like, oh, okay. But then she never said how to like apply or how to get involved with it. And so I just sent her a DM and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm interested in your coaching program. Can you send me an application link? So she did. And so I'm, I'm going through the application and I'm just pouring my heart out and feeling really, it's like, it's feeling right. It's feeling right. It's feeling right. And I get to the last question. And the last question is, I understand that coaching with so-and-so is $50,000 for six months or $100,000 for a year. Now, I mentioned before, I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on coaches. I usually, like the past couple of years, that's been my norm. It's never been 50. <laughs> it has never, it has never been 50. Slash, I'm now working part-time. Slash, I don't have this $50,000 just sitting around to make this happen. So I knew it was going to be a lot. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be quite that much. Um, but I knew it was going to be a lot. And I, I I didn't go into panic though. When I read it, it was like, oh, okay. Well, if it's meant to be, the money's going to show up for it. It's not going to be a big deal. And that was a big win for me because, and I'll share this probably a little more in this episode, but um, I'm someone who in the past struggled a lot with fear and anxiety around money and not, not being quote unquote irresponsible with it and struggling to figure out if clients were going to stay or leave really if money was going to stay or leave. And, um, 
that's a long, that's been a long history of mine that I've been healing over the years. And so my relationship with money is so good at this point and has gotten so much better, even in the past few months um, that I just kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, let's have the call and see, and I'll figure out the money if, if it's the right fit. So we have the call. Of course, it's the right fit. It's like, all right, well, how am I going to come up with the money for this thing? And um, I, so I, I knew that I could put a significant down payment down on a credit card. And I trusted, I trusted that I would find a way to create the rest of the money quickly because I was literally acting 100% on instinct and intuition. And I was trusting myself that this was the right move to make. Now I will say when I made the verbal commitment to her that I was going to enroll in her program, I then went and vacillated for like three days and I questioned myself. And this is, it's part of the journey, right? Sometimes we do this. It's, that was a big leap for me energetically to, to invest in a coach at that level. But I will say, you know, a rule of thumb, and this is something I learned from Chris Harder. And I think this is a really good benchmark that just, it's helpful to know, like, how much do I invest in coaching? Take like five to 10% of what you want to make that year and plan on that's what you invest in coaching. And that goes up to about a million dollars. And then from there, there's kind of a point of diminishing returns. But for me, I had made the commitment and the decision to be like, let's go for seven figures this year and just see what happens. And, and so it made sense to invest $50,000 in a coach. It was just a matter of figuring out the money for it. So, um, I kind of went back and forth though, because it went against everything I had been taught as a girl about what was responsible with money. You don't use a credit card. You don't um, spend money you don't have. Like you could get a coach for way less. Why are you spending this? You know, just don't spend money you don't have, yada, yada, right? And everyone, you have to have your own financial rules. So part of this is not me telling you what your financial rules are. You will know what they are when you're fully aligned and intact with your own inner guidance system. My inner guidance system for me, I am okay with leveraging debt in the right situation. I'm totally okay with it because I know how money works energetically. But still, when I was making this decision, because it was a significant amount to put on a credit card, at least for me. And so I kind of went back and forth. And I remember that in between phase for those couple of days was so painful. And it was so excruciating because part of me, like my higher self was calling me to move forward on this and to take that leap, even though I didn't see how it was all going to come together. And then the little scared small Elise was like, Oh my God, but it's $20,000 on a card at once. And you know, how are you going to do this? And, um, then you're going to have 30,000 more that you owe and yada, yada. And I reached a point, I just remember, I finally reached a point of surrender with it where I was like, I am so tired of, I'm tired of playing to lose, playing not to lose rather than playing to win. And I think in my life, I've played to win the vast majority of the time. But in this situation, I had started, my mind had started going to playing not to lose, which is never an empowering place to be. And I said, damn it, like, I'm going to do this and see what happens. And the way that the thing that helped me was to think back to a situation in my life where um, I did something that really scared me and I didn't know what the outcome was going to be on the other side, but I knew I had to take action. And for me, it was um, years ago. I don't even remember how many years ago, seven, eight years um, when I decided to get a divorce and I was in a really toxic marriage and um, I was so scared because I was young, you know, I was 27 and I was so afraid of the judgment of what people were going to think of me for getting divorced at that age. And I'd only been married for like 14 months. Uh, and I, I knew all along that it wasn't right, but I, I didn't trust my instincts and I went along with what I thought would please other people. And I reaped the consequences of that. And I remember, so I was 27 and I was in so much pain around this relationship and around where I was in my life that I thought, well, it can't get worse than this. Like I'm already kind of living my worst case scenario. And 28's always been a really special number to me. It's why some of my products are priced at $28. I was born on the 28th. My son was born on the 28th. All these things happened on the 28th for me. And I was about to turn 28. And I said, I'm not going to waste my 28th year living like this. Like I get one 28th year in this lifetime. I get one and I am not going to mess it up like this. And I'm terrified to ask for a divorce. I'm terrified to do this, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to trust that there's got to be something better on the other side. So I did it. Wasn't 
I mean, there was part of it that really sucked, but <laughs> like many things, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be six months to the day that I made that decision six months to the day from my uh, 28th birthday, I met my husband, Jason. Um, well, he, he wasn't my husband at the time. I met Jason, who is my soulmate and my husband. And if I had not made that leap and done that thing that terrified me, I would not have met Jason and I would not have my son, Jack. And it's a reality I can't even fathom. And so I thought back to that time and I, that gave me the faith and the trust that it was safe to follow my instincts with this and that something better had to be waiting for me on the other side. So it was like early on a Sunday morning and I was like, I'm sick of vacillating and going back and forth on this. I'm just going to do it. So I pull out my credit card and I pay the invoice. And then I was like, oh crap, now what? <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> and it threw me into a whole different level of thinking because I now suddenly was accountable for paying $50,000 back pretty fast for me. If, you know, part of it's make, it's really making $50,000 pretty fast. And I remember when I made the decision to, and I didn't tell my coach this, she'll probably listen and hear it and, and laugh at me, but it almost didn't matter the quality of coaching I got from her because the woman I had to become in order to be able to make a $50,000 coaching payment was radically different from the woman who I was previously. And I knew that that woman, that's the woman who creates this animal sanctuary. That's the woman who donates large amounts of money to charities for children and animals. That's the woman who can put her husband through med school. That's the woman who does what she wants. And I knew that the transformation in just making that commitment was going to be massive. The other thing I knew was that it was going to bring up all my, uh, all my money demons that were kind of holding on. And it did, <laughs> it did. And I knew that going into it. And so I was mentally prepared for that. And I also was ready for that because I knew that unless I brought them up to be, you know, lovingly dissolved, um, that they'd keep running the show behind the scenes and limiting me. So, you know, the first couple of weeks after that, it was like, there was a big calm because I had just made the decision and stepped up and I immediately started getting ideas. Things started shifting areas where I had struggled before were suddenly just no longer a struggle because my level of thinking was just different because I'd stepped into that next level of myself. Um, I it, combination working with my coach combination, listening to my intuition, I got the, um, just received the information to create this new program that I'm now launching that has taken off like hotcakes, like it, but it wasn't until I made that decision that it actually started shifting and that I saw things. It was like, once I made the decision, all of a sudden I saw everything differently than I had before. And it was like, these blinds were kind of lifted, like the veil was lifted and I saw how I'd been limiting myself all along in unnecessary ways because of just unintelligent past thinking. And so I, again, I, this was such a process of just following the nudges, following the nudges, following the nudges. I didn't receive this like divine download immediately upon making that payment of here's how you're going to pay it back because that wasn't, that's not really fun. It's, it's the journey, right? What I was committed to along the way was feeling good. It was feeling good because everything we do is because we think we're going to feel a certain way as an outcome. And so I knew that when I'm feeling good, when I'm feeling calm, when I'm feeling brain heart coherence, like Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about when I'm feeling in my power, I'm creating, that's when I'm manifesting and bringing in everything I want. So I was really committed to staying in that state. And because I had made such a big leap, there were moments where I didn't feel that way. There were moments where I went into some panic. There were moments where I went into some fear where we live, we live in time lag, right? So you make a decision and you start doing things differently. And then there's kind of this germination process where your new thing has to be nurtured and create, it's just like planting a flower. Like you don't plant the flower and then pull up you plant a seed for a flower and then keep digging it up and digging it up and digging it up every day. You plant it and then you nurture it and you water it and you let it, um, you, you take good care of it and you trust and know that just continuing to give that flower the right conditions, it's only a matter of time until it blossoms. So I really focused on my mindset during this and stayed 
just really, really laser focused on feeling good along the way, regardless of not being able to see that my circumstances had transformed immediately because I was still kind of in that germination phase. All right. So in full transparency, I just took like a two hour break <laughs> since I finished that last sentence. I am momming on my own today and Jack woke up from his nap and I'm now I'm back. I'm back. I'm covered in sweet potato just a little bit because we had dinner. Um, but one of the things that I am super committed to is helping my women not be so much perfectionist and not such control freaks. Like I used to be over everything because you were literally blocking the energetic flow of what you want when you do that. So I'm going to take a side detour PSA here, show up your very best in every moment, bringing all of you unapologetically to the table. And by very best, I don't mean you can't show up with a sweatshirt covered in sweet potato when the occasion warrants it. I mean, show up with your full heart and your full energy like I am doing for you right now. All right. So we're back. I was talking about planting flowers. Things germinate. They take a while. So the key for me, when I made this big financial commitment and then was, um, didn't see, you know, it wasn't like automatically boom. I received one $50,000 client that paid for it all. Although that could have happened if that was in the best and highest good of everything. Um, I was really committed to maintaining a high energetic state because that's how it actually starts to come into you. That's how things come in, right? Everything's just vibration. So the key is matching the vibration of the thing that you want to experience which for me, I wanted to experience um, my, you know, my target for this quarter is 150 grand. I'm just going to share numbers very transparently here because I think it, it may help with the story. So that's my target, which was significantly higher, significantly higher than <laughs> I had ever done before. So I've been really holding that vibration and it wasn't, um, it, it wasn't seamless. I had moments, like I said before, of panic of, oh my God, what am I doing? But I knew that when I went into those energetic states that I was actually pushing away the thing that I wanted, because that's not a 150 grand and a quarter frequency. That's a scarcity frequency, right? So, um, so I, I noticed it. I got really just aware in my body of noticing when that was happening. And one of the beautiful things I've learned from my girlfriend, Allison Chavez, definitely follow her. She's so good with anything like universal laws and prosperity. It's her whole brand is when you are feeling bad, you're actually believing a lie. It's unintelligent thinking. And that was so helpful to me in those moments to be like, oh, okay, I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling anxious, but that me, all it means is I'm believing a lie. So what's the lie that I'm believing that's making me feel this way? And what would I need to think to feel just a little bit better? What would be a different thought, a more empowering thought? And with enough repetition of that, um, over time, those fears and anxieties were pretty much dissipated. One other thing that was really important to me, and this was hard for me at first, was cutting off consumption. And I brought this to my coach on one of our early calls. And I said, like, I, I sense energetically that what I'm doing is right. I sense that this move has been the right move for me. However, I'm reading some books right now and I'm studying some programs that are telling me that the decision I just made was stupid. <laughs> so I was following materials from people who don't agree with using debt to create what you want when that's what you need to do. And it was throwing me, it was making me question myself. It was making me question my decision. And she, she was like, cut it off, cut it off, cut off consumption for three weeks. And that was, that was challenging for me because I love reading. I love learning. Like that is my jam. I'm all, my favorite thing to do is to get up at 4am and read a book. Like I'm that, I'm that nerd. I love it. Cup of coffee, book. Mm, we're good. <laughs> we're good. And so when she said that, I was like, gosh, that, but learning is good and reading is good. And she was like, that's your comfort zone. She said, I want you to study yourself. And that I was like, you know what you've done what I want to do. I'm going to just listen to what you're saying. And I'm just going to trust it. So I cut off the consumption of those materials. Not that I'm not going to go back to them because they had really good points that it's not that those, again, everyone's money rules are different. And the point is to choose a money rule that's going to support you in accomplishing your goals. But 
not to just accept that whatever your parents' money rules were are have to be your money rules or your authority figures, right? This is really about thinking for yourself and choosing the money rules that feel right to you. And that's what I had to do. And when I cut off that outward consumption, it allowed me to anchor back into my truth without outside interference that was causing unnecessary suffering or self-doubt in a period where I was really, really stretching myself. So that was big. And I just want to share that with you because I think I'm a big fan of learning. I'm a big fan of also exposing yourself to different opinions just to grow. But there are some times, especially when you're anchoring into a new level of self-belief that you've got to like you got to cut it off for a while. And that was really, really key and pivotal. So along the, along the way, like I mentioned, I received, I started to receive guidance to launch this new program uh, called 10 K club. And I, one of the things I'm really good at and that I've always been able to do really quickly uh, for myself when I've started new businesses and I've gone through periods of losing everything unexpectedly and having to come back, like I can very quickly get back to a 10 K month within a matter of usually it's like no more than a few months when I'm starting something brand new, um, which meant for a long time, that was my financial vibration. That was my set point, right? We all have a set point. And so I like, I knew how to do that. And I also know that for a lot of, for a lot of us, whether you're in sales, whether you're an entrepreneur, that 10 K month is kind of like the first benchmark that most people want to hit. And maybe first for you, it's a 2K month and a 5K month, then a 10K month, right? But um, I think for a lot of women I work with, that's like, that's when they're starting to feel like they can relax a little bit. That's when they're starting to feel like they're having more freedom and abundance financially. And I know that's the first target for a lot of them. And so I received this inspiration to create this group program that's going to help women to get help, help get women to a 10 K month in 90 days or less. And again, that didn't drop in until I made the decision to follow my instincts and trust my gut with investing in myself. Well, when that idea dropped in, it wasn't fully formed. It was just kind of the rough concept. But one of the things that I have learned in recent years, and especially it just like so solidified it with this whole experience is not to be so much of a control freak over. I have to know everything because that actually blocks the beautiful inspired nudges and downloads that show up naturally when you're just kind of more relaxed about stuff and trusting. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay, what would the first step be? Okay, reach out to that person. Okay, what would the next step be? Okay, create this masterclass to help enroll people in it. Okay, blah, blah. and it would just, it dropped in so naturally. And I got the I think I came up with the concept about a month before I held the masterclass. And then frankly, I, I don't know if I would say procrastinate. I'm sure there was a level of procrastination on it because I used to have a limiting belief that I couldn't get women to show up for my programs, which really just was wounded, you know, wounded feminine. I, I can't have enough girlfriends kind of vibe. And that's really transformed for me um, recently, which is beautiful. And that's a whole nother podcast episode. So I got to dissolve that limiting belief because I was like, Oh, what if I put it out there and nobody wants it? And I finally, it was like a week before the masterclass. This was just like two weeks ago, a week before the masterclass. I was like, okay, I got to start promoting. Cause the coach told me you really need more like two weeks before a masterclass to promote. And it's heavy promotion. And I had pushed it far enough. I'll give myself a little bit of grace that I was also, you know, taking care of Jack part-time during this, but that's actually, that's not like, I don't even want to use that as an excuse. You, you know, you make time for what you need to make time for. So that's not an excuse. Um, so I started promoting this thing and I started getting really good traction. It was like, as soon as I just got out of my own way and started reaching out to the people I felt inspired to reach out to an invite, women were saying yes and signing up and signing up and signing up and signing up. And it's like, Oh, this is very interesting. This is, this is actually how it works. And it's fun because I knew that was how it worked. And I've had it work that way in other parts of my life. But when things are always formed twice, right? First in our minds and then in physical form. And so in my mind, this thing had already been formed for a while. And then to see it start to create in physical form was really fun. It's, it was more just validation of, oh yeah, I was on the right path, which was on the right track with it, which is cool. So when I was creating this masterclass to help introduce women to the 10K club, 
you know, one of the other things I had to really do again was go back to trusting myself because one of the things I've studied a lot and I, I know intuitive, not into, I know in my brain is how to set up a webinar that sells and you have, you know, you create these three limiting beliefs that you have to let go of to have this result. And then here's my story and my experience and how I transformed. And here's my client's stories and experiences and how they transformed. And then here's the deal I have for you today. And here's the discount and yada, yada. And like, I knew all of that. I've helped people. I've helped clients create webinars that work really well, but that type of structure didn't feel right for this. Not that I didn't want to weave in elements, but I didn't want it to be so boxed in that I was just following a formula. I've done that before. And it's, to me, that's always created a ceiling for my success. I think if you're going to achieve really next level success, it comes from looking inside instead of looking outside of everyone else's formula to see what works. So as I was creating this master, this masterclass, I was tempted to go review my training materials on how to create a high converting webinar. And I slipped the day before, like I'd been just channeling and writing and praying about it. And the downloads were just coming and coming and coming. And it was so beautiful. And I was crying while I made it because I felt like it was about so much more than just the title of the masterclass was your first six figures. But I felt like it was about so much more than that. It was about healing core wounds and releasing limiting beliefs and showing up in your full power. And so that part was so beautiful. And then my brain, my logical brain was like, well, you should just go check and make sure that you're not missing anything really critical with a webinar format. So I go check my notes and it's, it, of course, you know, it's, it sends me into a five hour spiral of, oh, well, I haven't structured this the right way. And, you know, this isn't going to convert. And what if this is such a flop and blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I let it spiral for a while. And fortunately I had a, um, a group call with some other women I'm, I'm in a program with that afternoon and got my, you know, kind of got my head back on straight and just reminded myself, like my inner guidance is always right for me. And my inner guidance was telling me to do this differently and to not follow a formula, but just speak from the heart. And so I did, and I breathed <laughs> and I finished creating the class. And the day of the class, so at the time of this recording, that was four days ago, um, since I did the class, I delivered it and I, it felt really good in my body when I was delivering it. And the women were so engaged, um, but I didn't know for sure how it had impacted people until the end when women just started sharing. Oh my gosh, it was, it was beautiful. The things that women said at the end, and then also in emails afterwards, um, really touched me. I mean, women sharing how their whole lives, they've been told by multiple people that they weren't good enough to pursue their goals or not knowing how their bodies worked and that their bodies could actually guide them to the right business decisions or um, major limiting beliefs and fear around what happens if I go for what I really want and then it doesn't happen. And I've, I've, had all of those limiting beliefs myself before some of them even recently. Um, and it makes you realize how the same we all are. And it was also just so reaffirming because one of the things I'm really committed to is ending suffering in my own life and in the lives of any of my clients who want to step up and, and claim that for themselves. Um, and you don't have to be my client for that. Like hopefully just listening to this podcast and, and watching my social stuff will help with that. Uh, but the suffering is not necessary. It's not. And it's, um, we make it that way sometimes. And I made it that way in my life for so long. And I thought to achieve my goals and to make, you know, at the time what I thought was really good money, six figures in business and, and be top of the sales leaderboard in my corporate jobs. Like I made it so hard. I made it so hard. And I, it was because I was out of alignment with my true nature and my true power. And what I've learned, and I think I'm still learning this, but what I know to be true so far about getting back in alignment with your true powers, it often involves a releasing of control over the things that you're clinging to, whether that be money, whether that be a relationship, whether it be a business partnership, but a releasing of control to fall, to actually just be open to receiving 
what's the guidance? What's the inner guidance that you're actually, that's been there all along that maybe you've just been blocking out because you haven't gotten still enough to listen to because it's always going to guide you in the right path. And it often involves making a big, scary leap, you know, just like I mentioned, like with my divorce and then with investing in this program and, um, and it does often involve that. And you have a choice, you know, you have a choice to stay where you are and you know what that is. So in some ways that probably feels safer, right? Because you know, but when, where you are is in a state of suffering, that's not living. It's not living. And it doesn't have to be that way. And that's what I've really learned. And it's been a beautiful lesson. So the punchline and what happened <laughs> the day after the masterclass, I made back almost my full investment in coaching in one day, in one day, in one day. <laughs> May I? <laughs> yes. That was big for me in one day. Um, I have never made that much in a day. I've never made that much in a month before. And it blew me away because it was, it, it was, I'd felt it like all along the way I had, I I've learned how to raise my vibration to the level of things that I personally want right now. Like I know as I grow, I'll desire bigger things that will require a higher vibration. And so I'm going to learn that as I go, but I've, I've, I've learned how to raise my vibration to the level of the things that I want right now. And so I'd, I would feel it and express gratitude every morning for how I knew this money was coming back in. And this, I would see this program and this masterclass, I would see women signing up. I would see their names in my email inbox coming in, coming in. So-and-so purchased the class. So-and-so purchased the class and it just happened. And then I would look at, I've got a board in my office for the 10 K club um, just with a list of, I'm taking up to 20 women in this program. And I've got a numbered list of one three twenty, 20. And I would just see names dropping in, dropping in, dropping in. And I would feel so much love. Like I still in my heart, when I talk about this, I feel that, um, and pay attention to this. Cause this is important. I didn't used to know what that meant. And I didn't used to think that was important. That's actually everything when you're, when you're manifesting what you're desiring and elevating your vibration, it's, you're going to feel it in your heart. You're going to feel extreme love and gratitude for the thing that hasn't even happened yet. And I would envision, mm, it's, it's making me emotional because we're actually going to do it right now. And it happened so much faster than I thought, but I would envision telling my husband that he would go part-time at work. And I would cry tears of gratitude for being able to do that. And that's, that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. Um, but it was aligned and it was honestly the easiest thing I've ever done. And it was, and because I wasn't trying to control it and I was trusting that everything is always working out for me. And I was just receiving divine downloads of who to reach out to and how, and what Instagram reel should I do? And what, you know, uh, what message should I send this person? And I used to try to so tightly control all of it. And now it's, it's just been so loose and free flowing, but in a beautiful way where every action that I take has 20 times the impact, if not more than that kind of loose scattered action that I used to take in my business. And so for me now, that's what I am so committed to because I've experienced how absolutely utterly fun and enjoyable and pleasurable this is to do business and sales this way. And it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to like stress you out <laughs> and it doesn't have to have you in overwhelm. In fact, if any of those things are happening for you, there's something off with it. So that's my heart. Like this is, it is incredible. I don't even have words. If you've experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're sitting there going, yes, yes, yes. And if you haven't experienced it, you're like, what the hell, Elise, <laughs> what are you talking about? But it's available. I promise if, if this woman who had such a tormented relationship with money and oh my God, not to mention my body, I didn't even talk about this. Like you probably know this, I've talked about it before on the show, but learning to trust my body to guide me is massive for me. I come from a eating disorder history, 17 years of not trusting myself, not trusting my body, cutting off all emotions and cutting off any signals from my body, because to do the things I did to my body, you have to actually not be able to feel it. You have to cut it off. And so 
to have that level of healing with both body and money and time is it's, I didn't know that I could ever be saying these things, but it all happened because I made myself available for it. And I got, I just decided I'm done with being in a state of suffering. And I know to get out of that state, I'll probably have to do something big and scary that my intuition is telling me to do. And, um, and, and I, that's what I've done. I've just, I've followed my intuition all along the way. And it's guided me to this beautiful place of excitement and abundance and joy and love and generosity and being able to create what I want to create and do it easily. And also trusting that whatever the best and highest for everyone is meant to happen. Like I'm so excited for that happening in my life. And so, you know, I felt inspired to record this podcast and share this with you. And, um, and I, I want to invite you as well to the 10, the 10 K club, you know, depending on when you're listening to this, if you're listening to it, the week it comes out, hopefully there's, uh, there's still spots, but like I said before, my commitment, uh, with this program and this first cohort that I'm, I'm bringing through is to take up to 20 women under my wing to empower you to get to a 10 K plus month in 90 days or less, but doing it in a way that feels joyful and that's intuitively guided. And that's going to incorporate all of you, your divine femininity, your creativity, you're going to come out of hiding in so many ways. You're going to show up as an expert in your space as bigger and more powerful than, well, you've known all along you are, but you just repressed it. Um, you're going to dazzle yourself. You're going to dazzle yourself with what's possible. And then that new level of energy and vibration and attractiveness and magnetism that carries with you the rest of your life. You know, once you know it, you can't unknow it. And some of the women, it's been really interesting to see the women signing up for this. Some of them, it's not even about money. <laughs> it's about purpose, finding purpose. Some of them, I've got one woman who's done close to a million dollars in revenue before. So it's, she's way past a 10 K month, but she cares about elevating herself and elevating how she shows up in her business and doing it with a lot of what I talked about in this podcast episode tonight, um, and then building a global empire from it. And I've got, uh, women in sales, like corporate sales, I've got entrepreneurs and it's just, it's just beautiful. So I want to invite you, uh, we kick off on February 15th, 2021. So again, you may be listening to this years in advance and Hey, maybe the program's still going. I'd be, I'd be excited about that if that is what is meant to be. But, uh, we kick off February 15th, 2021 enrollment closes on the 12th. So February 12th and the process, if you want to apply for it, uh, you need to do just a couple of simple things. One, go to elisearcher.com slash six figures. The first step is you need to watch the replay of that masterclass and you need to purchase it. It's an $85 buy-in. It's a money back guarantee. So if you buy it and for whatever reason, it doesn't do what you needed it to do. That's fine. Just email me and my team. There's instructions there. Um, haven't had any, any requests for that so far for women who did, but I totally honor whatever is right for you, but I need you to watch that. Um, one, because it's really good. And I don't say that to be like, Oh, I'm so good. I say it because it's, it, it was divinely inspired and created. It's, I think it's going to transform your life and how you think about yourself. The women, the responses I've been getting from women afterwards are just that they're on cloud nine afterwards and making big changes in their life and showing up differently. And just, it was a lot of transformation in a short amount of time for the attendees. So elisearcher.com slash six figures, you need to watch that first. And then at the end, you're going to see where you can apply for a call with me about the 10K Club. I explained the program as well in that masterclass. So you're going to get a sense in that masterclass of my style. You're going to get a sense of what the, you're going to get a lot of details on what the program's all about and who it's a good fit for, who it's not. Um, but I need you to watch that first. And then if you feel called, book a call with me. There will be a link below. So that's what you do. Leesearcher.com slash six figures. Uh, go there, get your masterclass, watch it, transform your life, <laughs> and then apply uh, for the 10K club. So I am really excited to partner with the right women for this. I'm just very committed to the right women are going to step up and show up and claim this for themselves. And if that is you, and if this message is resonating with you, then I invite you to do that. So until next time, 
I'm just, I'm excited. I'm on this journey with you and I'm going to keep sharing with you my results and what's happening. And I think I, I personally am kind of at the tip of the iceberg for what's about to happen and transpire in my life. And I'm going to share that with you. And I'm going to share with you everything that I'm learning along the way so that you can implement what works for you from my journey in your own life. So thank you for your time, attention. Remember, if you want to apply for 10K Club, do it, do it now, do it now, because we're closing out in a week, but elisearcher.com slash six figures, grab your masterclass. And um, I can't wait to see you there. All right, my friend, so much love. And I look forward to seeing you on the inside.